Now that's a stupid survey. Meanwhile, from a late night chat to a talk with the troops, the president of Camp Pendleton this very hour, this very moment, but it is what he said last night that is still sticking in a lot of people's craw. Yeah, we don't have a domestic spying program. Oh, really? Well, the judge ain't buying it. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And I guess Ed Snowden really didn't do anything wrong because to hear the President of the United States tell it, there is no domestic spying going on. There is no spying on Americans. Uh, you know, we don't have a domestic spying program. What we do have are some mechanisms where we can track uh, a phone number or an right. email address that we know is connected to uh, some sort of terrorist threat. This just in, by the way, I'm not heavy. The camera adds 50 pounds. All right, now, the judge knows that is not true. The judge also knows that this thing the president said last night is not true. Not when, uh, you know, a couple hundred million Americans are, are being tracked. Judge, I mean, that, that really. I was, surprised. Over the top. I was surprised to hear the president say that. Because not only Edward Snowden, but other former NSA staffers, I'm not talking about outside contractors, but people employed for their careers with the NSA, have corroborated Mr. Snowden in this respect. The government has the ability to access from storage trans the, the, the actual emails and texts that every American has sent in the past two and a half years and the sound of telephone calls, the voices on the calls that Americans have made in the past two and a half years. Example, the order signed by Judge Roger Vinson in April of this year, just four months ago, directed Verizon to surrender the telephonic information on all 113 million of its customers. That's more than half the telephone base in the United States. The president couldn't possibly not know that. But that is not, he says, a domestic surveillance program. Then what well, is it? Well, I, I don't know what the president means in his terminology, but if capturing phone calls and capturing emails and capturing texts of every American for two and a half years is not a domestic spying program, then nothing is a domestic spying program. He's a good lawyer. Spying program. You're a very good lawyer, judge, and constitutional expert besides. It, 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 I know it gets back to this Clintonian that depends hear, what the meaning of the word is. is. So, but what he's saying is, if the intent isn't to spy on, on, on those in the United States, and he's saying so that it's not a domestic surveillance program, it is then an effort to find through tracking down this stuff in the United States to go after bad guys abroad, is he then technically within the letter of being accurate? He's not anywhere near being accurate. He's not anywhere near being lawful. He's not anywhere near being constitutional. But I know what his goal is. Now, no one disputes his goal. His goal is to find the bad guys. His goal is to hear a conversation between two monsters plotting something right. before they carry it out so that we can stop them. That's a laudable goal. It's a goal he is required to pursue. And he also said, in and Jay Leno, that he fine-tuned this enough, some of the laws and the crackdowns he inherited from President Bush, with, with court permission, et cetera, et cetera, so that it took some of the oomph out of it. Do you agree with that? No, because this is a secret court. The judges on which aren't even allowed to keep copies of their own orders and their own rulings. They can't carry their own pens, pencils, papers, uh, iPhones, or Blackberries into the court or out of the court. We don't even know what the government's arguments are. Look, when the government is after a half dozen evil people, why does it need to surveil all 330 million Americans? Do you know where the government has answered that question? To this secret court. It has never answered it in public. And when General Alexander, Keith Alexander, uh, the head of the NSA, was asked by Congressman Mike Rogers, former FBI agent and now chair of the House Intelligence Committee, do you have the ability to listen to all phone calls and read all emails, answer, no, sir, we don't have that authority. He was asked about ability. He responded about authority because he does have the ability. Do they listen to everybody's phone call? They don't have the time to. Can they listen to everybody's phone call? Of course. Was the Constitution written to prevent the government from engaging in dragnets like that? They're looking for 30 people and they surveil 330 million. You better believe that's why we have the Fourth Amendment. So only, the only way they can pull this off is in secret. 
And the only way they can get Congress to agree with it is by telling fewer than 20 members of Congress in secret and then saying to those members of Congress, it's against the law for you to tell anybody what we've just told you. That's not a representative form of government. That's not what the Constitution requires, and the president knows that. Do you think you're particularly angry because your birthplace, Newark, New Jersey, is now considered the most <laughs> inhospitable city on the planet? Yes. I was born in Newark, and I did practice law there for a couple of years, and it's not the most inhospitable place in the United States. But over Islamabad? I don't believe that. No, I don't believe I that. I don't believe that. Anybody it's else outrageous. but Shep saying that, I wouldn't believe yeah. it. I believe Shep. I don't I believe I saw the study to which you were referring, but I, I just don't buy it. And I, I sense a lot of the leaders stand on New Jersey. I'll tell you what. I will types. discuss NSA spying with the President of the United States and you in Newark, New Jersey. Sure. And we might invite Shep. Newark bar. All right. Uh, <laughs> thanks, buddy, very much. Uh, the judge on what might not be just right.